Hello and welcome back to the Midwestern Esports Conference final set uh, between Ohio State University and University of uh, Illinois, uh, Chicago. Um, that last match was pretty uh, pretty one sided, I'd say. There was a there was a kind of probably full picks by uh, OSU, but we'll have to see how this next game goes because I think um, I believe that Chicago is going to try and run with this momentum of winning this this one game, and I think they're going to try and punish OSU for even disrespecting them to start with. Um, so hopefully we'll see a little bit of that. Um, and uh, I know I'm not supposed to be uh, biased as a caster, but I, as I said last match. Who doesn't like an underdog? I, I, you know, always root for the underdog. It's always nice to see uh, a little bit of a comeback, uh, especially if there is previous BM in the games. But on to the pick and ban phase. Um, let's, let's see, Morgana, uh, Aurelian Soul, and Kai'Sa banned away. Right. It's the traditional Aurelian Soul. They always, they've almost every time banned Aurelian Soul first. I don't know why. I think they're scared or somebody. It's very targeted, uh, but the Aurelian Soul has been banned. Kai'Sa has been banned. Makes sense. Kaiser was really strong about two games ago. Morgana and Caitlyn were banned, which is interesting. Just I think it's just because that comp is very strong. That was banned because of the first game. We're seeing a lot of bans because of barsing the people before. But this third ban from Chicago is going to be popping up the Olaf, which again was from I think the first game as well. Here the jungle Olaf no fight problem. and Ezreal. Makes a lot of sense from OSU because Ezreal was the one that dominated that last game and allowed, really was the really was the um the momentum for Chicago to completely sweep in that victory. Oh yeah, that Ezreal was going off with the help of his trusty friend uh, Teddy Eddy, the Braum player. Um, they were just roaming around that map, absolutely wreaking havoc, taking all three outer towers for their entire team, as well as securing two infernal drakes, as well as a rift herald. So they're. Their objective control was pretty on point with that ADC of that game. So I think that might actually prove a little bit to Chicago that they can win and um, possibly change their jungler's mind um, into supporting the bot lane a little bit more just because we saw how, how powerful that bot lane was after they started rolling uh, with that momentum, started snowballing, and they started taking advantage of literally everything. So um, I would like to see maybe a little bit of uh, a, a change in priority uh, for the jungler on Chicago's team to focus down more on the bot lane because they just proved themselves that they, they that they could fight back and fight hard. That's for sure. And before you can even say about your jungle supporting your bot lane, maybe you should get a support that can support your bot lane as well. Kind of like the Thresh pickup that OSU will be taking. Maybe, I know this is weird to say, but knowing this team, that could be an AD carry Thresh. I don't know, but I'm thinking that might probably is their support. We lovely Zaya and Braum do it. That's a strong. Zaya is very scary, especially when she starts getting ahead, and that Braum can definitely keep that Zaya alive. So I like the picks. Lucian was picked by OSU again, and I think it's a smart pick as long as it's an AD carry pick. Or if the mid lane wasn't doing too bad, but I think he'd be better suited in the, the bot lane. Was but it um Zian Delta or, or not Zian Delta? Was it um actually was it? Was it Chicago who had Zaya that no. first game, or, or, or that third match, or was it OSU who had Zaya? I believe it was OSU. It was the Rakan and Zaya duo down by. Oh Bayon. no no no! That was definitely um. Oh, that was uh, Chicago because OSU at the time had the Mordecai. Oh shoot! Show. You're right. My bad. Yeah, you're right. So Zaya, so Zaya is going to be picked up by him again, which yeah. he was really good on. Yeah, was, he was uh, seven and two in the mid game. Seven two yeah, and I believe a, a couple assists. And a good thing to pick up as well is that Skarner, who had a, who was doing great last game, being able to get to all impact all lane roles as well as picking up those objectives. And to counter that jungle, it seems like OSU is going to be picking up their friendly neighborhood Trundle, who was um, their pick in the first game, which he was doing pretty well in Trundle as well. So I like these. Uh, I feel like everyone's picking their best right now. Are going pretty close near. It. Yeah, thankfully we aren't seeing uh, too much of an unconventional, maybe a little bit of a trolley team comp. Uh, so far, we are having pretty standard pick and ban phase uh, with the wife steel lane plus the trundle. Um, I mean, I guess he is a troll, but I don't think that counts. Um, but let's see what this last ban is from Chicago. It looks like OSU is targeting that mid lane and the uh, the AD. Uh, the priority goes on on those two as the uh, as the damage dealers. No no jungle bans coming out as the Skarners let through, but. Ooh, the Diana ban. Yep, each team still has two more picks for OSU. They still up their top lane and mid lane, as well as 
Mm, Chicago needs to pick up their top lane and mid lane as well. So let's see which mid or top will OSU pick for this. Talia was left open. That is a great pick, I think, for OSU. Due to the fact that Talia is both has great roaming potential, but also a very scary amount of burst damage. So right now, I'm loving OSU's comp. It's very. It seems like you got like a thresh to get pick slash be in the front lane. Talia being there to hit from afar, but also to like if they get too close to pull them in closer. Lucian to get that quick burst and Trundle to just be fighting throughout. So I'm really enjoying the OSU picks as well as liking. I like Chicago's as well because they got the Zaya and Brom doing a ton of damage. Skarner in the jungle being able to be able to abduct one of their enemy lane opponents and then picking up that Nar, which was a great was great I think about two games ago in the top lane. He was able to get a lot of chain CC and as well as being able to do a ton of damage to high health champions because of that passive. Let's see what um, Chicago picks up as their final though. Ooh, Chicago picks up the Oriana versus the Talia and just a, a little bit of a small fact from the uh, the WEC semifinal that I casted. Uh, when Talia was picked, it just so happened that Rise was left open in those sets uh, between uh, Denver and Arizona. And a lot of the the presence from that Rise, which is banned out in this game, was that he has his Realm Warp, which can follow Talia around with her uh, her ability to basically travel across the map within seconds with that Re Weaver's Wool. Um, so that's going to be pretty crucial in this matchup to see how uh, how Oriana. I'm not going to try and butcher <laughs> the mid laner's name, but how Oriana can uh, and, uh, can follow up on the roams from Talia if if she is roaming a lot. I just want to say one thing. I love OSU's top laner. Orin is the best. I think he is so cool. I hope he he makes the coolest weapons up there. Because they're going to be cool. Well, after that being said, let's real quick run down these teams. We have Nar, Skarner. Nar in the top lane. Skarner in the jungle. Oriana in the mid. Zaya in carry. The Brahm as the support. Versus OSU's Orin in the top lane. Trundle in the jungle. Talia in the mid. Lucian as the bot. And Thresh as the support. So, looking at these two team comps, let's break it down. Um, let's start from the bottom. Let's see. Zaya and Braum versus Lucian versus Thresh. How do you think this is going to go? Yeah, we'll start from the bottom now. All right, Dave. Um, I, I want to see their performance with the wife steal lane. Uh, OCA's performance with the wife steal lane. Because now that they're on conventional picks, that lane... Is pretty terrifying, but against a Brom, we saw how well Teddy Eddie played Brom last uh, the last match, uh, and so he he's definitely a uh, force to be reckoned with. And Zaya is is the is the champion that um, that is where is Osama? He picked that champion in the in the second match and was able to do relatively well, except for uh, in the mid game they started to fall apart. But from the early laning phase. That Zaya is actually a really strong pick, so it doesn't matter that his Ezreal got banned out. Uh, the Zaya is just as strong of a pick, so I think this uh, this bot lane matchup is going to um, we're, we're going to have to see how this one rolls out. But uh, once again, I just want to reiterate that uh, if I Love Thighs goes down to the bot lane and maybe prioritizes ganking it more with his with his uh, definitely more present Skarner, um, I believe that Chicago has much more of a fighting chance uh, if they focus down on that bot lane. That's for sure. And let me real quick, I'm just going to break down this top lane with the Gnar versus the Orn. I think Orn's going to have a problem in the beginning with this Gnar just poking him down. But he does have the scary amount of burst from the end of his puff of flame breath that it then scorches the enemy and allows him to do a lot more damage based off the health the enemy has. I think that the Gnar will be able to do a little bit of poke in the beginning. Orn will probably come come back towards the mid game, but if he gets too far behind by this Nar zoning, he's gonna have a trouble. But how about let's talk about the overall comps? You looked at OSU, you're looking at Chicago. Who do you think will be the victorious one on the rift this time? I think Chicago actually has a pretty good fighting chance. Uh, they have all the champions that they that they want to play. Uh, maybe not the Rise and the Azir because those were uh, unfortunately banned out but oriana for this mid laner is just as uh, just as powerful um uh, maybe if we see a little bit more synergy with those uh, command shockwaves and the nar um we could see a potential like very very strong performance from them but i think overall very uh, this game very heavily is going to be reliant on um on the junglers i think this entire game's focus is going to be on the junglers just to see what lanes they prioritize because without those junglers i most of those lanes are actually decently even. 
and uh, if not, if not, um, maybe a little bit one-sided towards uh, certain lanes. I would say maybe OSU's mid laner has a little bit of an edge over uh, Chicago's in terms of overall performance. And uh, but the bot lane of Chicago is pretty powerful and uh, not to be trifled with, uh, as as we saw last game and as we saw in that previous Zaya performance. I think most of this game is going to be dependent on the jungler and how each team pushes their advantages and how they keep their advantages in the mid lane or uh, in the mid game. That's for sure. As we load up into this loading screen, let's take a little bit of a look at these runes. We have the Thresh in the bot lane taking that... The one that when you CC somebody, it does damage, but I forget the name of. It's a great name, I know. And we'll be having Teddy Eddie being able to take the other one that allows people to block damage for your enemy. I'm sorry. I am very bad at this. But we'll be loading into this match. But we also will be doing a buffering. You know the drill. We're going to wait here a little bit. We're going to restart back to zero. We're going to make sure everybody's together to make sure this is a smooth and great stream for you. So you're able to watch with ease and not worry that someone's ahead of the other one. This is high octane gameplay. So definitely, definitely. We're gonna check. Last match of the special. Man. Papa seems like our streamer. That's our that's our that's our papa. He's got his client frozen right now. So we're gonna be sitting here for a little bit. Let's let's have a little chat. Shall we? Let's figure out how this is gonna work. Do you think they're gonna go for an invade early off on either of the teams? I'm hoping um either team just plays their uh, their regular starts maybe a more defensive start because uh well actually screw that i i hope one of the team invades because that's normally what brings a lot of the action but hopefully we won't see too many uh dumb mistakes because no one no one likes to see those um but i would like to see uh maybe some early plays from this threshold we'll, we'll have to see what he can do um with the help of maybe a level one star pillar that'd be crazy uh for an invade but uh how's uh how's our how's our papa sims doing i believe we are going to go to the one minute mark because that's when Papa was able to join back. So I'm a real quick look through this to make sure we have nothing big happening here. And it seemed like nobody's going to be doing any invading. It's going to be just a simple little passive type of laning. So we're going to get up to the one minute mark and pause here to be able to sink right at that time. Yeah, unfortunately, a little bit of a spaghetti coating by Riot Games. Spag as usual. Spaghetti punch! Yeah, spaghetti. And, um... Yeah, and just so, a suspected client, you know. Yeah, we're gonna make sure everything's gonna go real nice and smooth. I see a little bit right now. Trundles, the Oriana starts to poke him a little bit, but in three, two, one, we're gonna take a little bit closer look at this. Oriana's gonna be backing away from the Trundle. And they're going to be going back. Trundle's actually going to go towards the jungle. And Skarner is able to actually get a ward off to the enemy red. So they'll have that little bit of advantage on the vision there. We're going to see that everybody is going to be moving back again. It seems like four out of four games. We're going to be starting. Skarner's going to be starting his blue while Trundle starts his red. Mirroring each other as jungles. And they will start their clears that way. Maybe trying to empty out for a gank in the the bot or the mid lane. So Zyla's going to be trying to get that early poke damage on that Lucian, but Lucian's not going to be afraid at all. He's just going to keep poking it down. You got to be careful though that Thresh does still have his hook and he will pull him back, give him a thumbs up for there, saying this will be a fun game. Let's see Orin and Nar still going to be smacking each other as a wet noodle fight. Thresh going to get that flay off, not taking hook as his first as his first um, ability, but instead flaying them back towards him, trying to maybe get a little bit of damage as well as having a little yeah. bit of auto attack as a punch. Yeah. Just to clarify for uh, for viewers sake, uh, just go ahead and count your time just a little bit. Like, so I'm 215, 216, 217, 218, 219. Speaking of 221, uh, 222, 223. Did you know it's 224? <laughs> yeah, 225. All and right. the Orin's going to be getting poked down a little bit as well in the top lane from this Gnar as he's about to transform into the Mega Gnar. Get that Gnar bar, man. We're going to keep going in. He's going to be able to do a little bit of damage, but you got to be careful. He's going to be stunning up that Orin a little bit, but Orin's going to be hitting him with his Rock of Fun. 
He's gonna Fuck maybe breathe with some fire on him. He's gonna get him into that scorch zone, and Orn not gonna be able to be able to pop that scorch. He's gonna back off a little bit. Scarner going for the early gank on top of this Tilia. Yeah, this Talia is going to get pressured down in the mid lane, but she is going to be able to get away, surprisingly, with the help of that red buff. I'm not really sure how they didn't capitalize on that, um, but it is going to put pressure on her regardless as she, while she regroups uh, with her jungle a little bit, just to get some vision down uh, to avoid another gank by the Skarner. Smart Wharf right there, immediately catching out the Skarner. And actually, speaking of catching out the Skarner, that's exactly what it could be. Skarner forced to flash over that knockup. And uh, Talia completely out of mana. This is completely up to McDougal right now. And heal forced from the Orianna. And I love that. It looks like he's going to go down. Flash forced from McDougal. And no mana for those Orianna. So she definitely can't fight either. Both the mid laners, low on health, low on mana. And it was all up to the jungle right there. As well as when we were fighting in that 80 carry section. The Zaya was trying to burst down that Thresh. He was overstepping his boundaries, but Thresh doing the flay was able to pull the Zaya a little closer to Lucian, also igniting the Zaya at the same time. But Lucian was not able to put enough damage because when the Zaya was backing off, she was able to heal and was able to get away with just a sliver of her health. But being able to get both. Ooh, flash flay Ooh. under the tower by the Thresh. Concussive blows is going to go down, though. I don't think, I don't know if that was worth it. I, I actually don't think that was worth it. Thresh picked up the kill with no assist from Lucian somehow. Um, I don't know how that happened, but... Unless this is a Thresh AD carry, like I was saying, in some solutions possible. Ooh, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. It was yeah. not a good trade-off in the end. Sadly, he is going to actually just lose a threat, lose a flash for a solo kill on the AD carry, which I guess in the end you're going to be able to starve the AD carry a little bit of that XP, but you lost your Thresh and your flash and gave another kill to the enemy jungler, who can now impact other lanes with. Nar going to be taking a little bit of damage from that Orn, who was not able to take him completely out of the game, but was able to do a decent amount of damage nonetheless. Ooh. And yeah, a little bit of a... Uh, poking uh, down there. Yeah. Um, so let's take a... Five, at the five minute mark, let's, let's take a look five, at the four, statistics. Five, six, seven, eight, um, nine, ten. I believe we're sinking up again, but I think... We'll Twelve. Go. 13 good 14 15 all right well it's it's fun you know riot is a lovely company but one thing they're not lovely at is spectator yeah exactly. but unfortunately keep going at this because you know we're bringing this all to you over the power of the interwebs and we're going to be seeing how this scarner might be trying to make a play down towards the bot lane maybe taking the ocean drake which is possible. Nope, he's just gonna be backing off. Probably gonna go either take an impact towards the mid or going to go just grab him some of them that good fried chicken there. And uh, up. I'm hoping for this uh, this bot lane that they, they start to get maybe um, a little bit of support from the Skarner, but they are gonna have to uh, reciprocate uh, with, with lane control because they are kind of heavily pushing in that bot lane. So it's making it harder and harder for that Skarner to gank. Um, so he can't really focus that pressure onto the bot lane and, and, and kind of create a lead for them. Uh, but meanwhile, over the scoreboard, there's there's a tiny bit of a 500 gold lead going on for OSU. Uh, that might be coming from that uh, first kill on the Trundle as well as that fresh kill um, onto the Zaya. But uh, in terms of CS, I think everyone's decently even right now. Top lane 41 to 43. Uh, the jungle is the CS a little bit volatile, but uh, Orion in the mid lane above uh, Talia and at a 10 CS uh, deficit. Um, let's see, Zaya and Lucian. Uh, Lucian is leading that with another 10 CS lead. And overall, I think the, uh, the gold is pretty even. Not too much fighting going on um, in this game compared to the other the other matches. Uh, a lot of early game battles. That's for sure. Orn's going to be doing a little bit more damage to this Nar in the top lane. But Nar, ooh, the flash of the call of the Forge God coming in. Oh, but he could Nar him into the tower. Wait for the Nar bar. Oh, wait, he already used it. Never mind. Uh, oh, wow, wait, McDougal came out of nowhere, and I don't think there's... Oh, my God, they're both 100 HP. is so low on health, and can Skarner and Orianna do anything about this? Orianna's gonna have to try and conserve that mana. Look, she has, like, no mana, probably about 10% of it. She's gonna use it to hit Command Protect underneath that tower, and yes, they're gonna clean up that Orn. I think they were a little bit slow on the retreat on that one, so they're gonna have to give up that Orn. Trundle's gonna have to run away and kind of mourn his, uh, his friend until he respawns in 10 seconds. It seems like in the bot lane, Zaya's gonna be trying to take down this Lucian. Lucian's been ignited by, as well as Zaya's been ignited. Rob's gonna have to 
flash out of danger as the thresh hook threads the needle between both the Zaya and the Brahm, and picking up nobody to pull back to the bottom of his ocean. And they're going to now be pushing down this bot turret as the end, as the um. Oh, the Weaver's Wall, though, coming down from the Talia. Can they clean up these kills? Calling going onto that shield. Yeah, it doesn't matter how big your shield is if uh, if that many bullets are being fired at you. Uh, and there's three people in your face while you're very low between your towers. That's pretty ridiculous, actually. But um, Skarner is going to try and capitalize on a gank top to see if she, he can get maybe like a little bit of a retribution kill for his team on this Ornn. He's going sneaking through this tribe. What can he do? This Ornn is getting baited, actually. This, this Nara is going to have to fight it out the percent health damage is doing a ton of damage in the and the stun going down onto the orn gets nard double stunned into the wall i don't think there's much he can do here actually uh wait as i'm saying that okay no he there's he doesn't have flash up there's no way yep there's the boulder <laughs> mm -hmm. he was close though he, he was trying to get away but sadly he was stuck between a literal rock and a big giant beast close enough yeah <laughs> yeah and it seems like now the Brom is looking for maybe a pick here. I don't know what he's going to do. He's all by him's low. Some Trungle trying to get this blue buff for his mid laner, who is going to be picking it up and heading back to the lane with now some good mana sustain. Thresh flashing for the flay, but missing, Ooh, sadly. Barely misses, but... Oh, because of blows. They could have capitalized on that Thresh. Uh, he did waste his flash and the death sentence, so I'm not sure why they didn't punish him right there. Um, but he gets, ooh, that root into Winter's Bite. That would have been devastating to that thresh. That hit. It's getting pulled out a little bit by the Talia, but sadly, Talia also got hit by the Oriana Ball, causing both of them to take decent amounts of damage. And, but the Oriana is just getting multiple rocks thrown at her, sadly being stoned slowly ooh. to death. Death Sentence lands onto a minion, but Skarner is here to help. Both junglers are 3v3 in the bot lane. Impale going down onto Thresh. They're focusing the support, and and both the... Oh my god, both supports are actually going down because of blows going on to Lucian, but a tower dive coming up from the Trundle. Command Shockwave! Yeah, Oriana's down, and Talia has just followed a little bit late to the fight, so she can't really capitalize on anything. A two-for-one trade, not that great for the for the gank on the, uh, on the side of Chicago. Born, gonna be they taking... could have done better there. Like, what do you think they could have improved right there? I think um, the probably the Skarner not ulting the Thresh. Oh, but a dive! Oh my god! Wait! Oriana just flashed into the Death Sense. He's gonna pick up a, a Retribution kill for that Thresh, but yeah, Lucian's... Oh my god, wait! Lucian went down to minion. Zaya gets a double kill. Uh, I don't think that was supposed to happen, but... I, I don't sure know if Oriana purposely that. flashed for that or not, but she saved um her, her AD carry's life. <laughs> That was crazy. I'm, gonna say right she flashed, that. I'm saying she flashed for her AD carry. She predicted it. She knew. <laughs> what a um, in, the in the thing is, the Skarner should have probably ulted a carry or something because the Thresh, no matter what, doesn't deal damage. Maybe he's going to CC a little bit. And her oh, Call gifted. of the Forge God going down onto the Nar, but is there any way he can go? Oh, no, my, my client's bugging out, so I can't see anything. Wait. Don't worry. I can tell you, Nar died. I know, sadly. Not able to get over the wall, and it's going to go down. But the Thresh finding himself a little Brom in the jungle. It's going to be beating him up a little bit, but it seems like Brom's just going to walk out of this pretty much scotch free. Oriana's going to be coming down. Hopefully, Thresh doesn't chase too hard into this. He seems like he's going to be trying to pull in his AD carry to help, but it's going to get picked out by the Skarner real quick. Yeah, uh, just, like, just for a little bit of a clarity, clarification five, purposes. 36, 37, 38, 39, 40. 41. All right, and we are good. Uh, sorry, I apologize. Yeah, the Zaya was Fine taking base. a little bit of damage from that Lucian, but is not going to get too much taken out of her now. I think the Skarner needs to probably focus either this, this um, it went ulting, needs to focus either this Lucian or this Talia, because that's probably where the main damage is going to be coming from all these yeah. fights. He actually ended up impaling Thresh, uh, using his ultimate on Thresh that last fight. Um, yeah. So I think that was very useful. Actually, both teams in that last fight. Ooh, ultimate call. Oh, command Shockwave going on to Talia, and there's the impale. I think this Talia yeah, is down for the count. Yeah, yeah, I think that was good. That was good old. Good old. Yeah, good mid lane pressure from the Skarner right here. I think he definitely knows oh. how to use the mid but the death sentence <laughs> whiffing. Oh my god, Ignite goes down onto Bromba Glacial Fissure. Goes down. Oh, the command up. Command up. I don't remember what it's called, but it slows everyone, and Thresh is going to go down wall. Nar and Skarner are chasing down this trundle. Yeah, there is going to be the Nar bar, the double stun into the wall, as well as a red buff ticking on this trundle. There's no way he's going to escape. 
They're gonna be moving right for that water drink. I just wanna say that Thresh put a thumbs up, and I think it was the funniest thing because then he missed his death sentence. Yeah. Completely threw it the wrong way. So I guess that was good on him for trying. Wait. I was trying to hit them. But so, with um, that fight, Chicago uh, has cleared up a tiny bit of a gold lead, and the, the game is completely even right now. 10, 10 to 10 kills. Both both teams gold uh, at 20, 22.3k. Um, most of the laners are doing de decently evenly. Um, and kind of as it should go, the supports are taking the brunt of most of the damage. Yeah, for sure. And it seems like um, what little what lead OSU did have have now lost it from little picks here and there. Uh, especially since Thresh keeps getting picked out because he's away from his team too much. He, he keeps trying to roam for something, but with nobody behind him, he's just getting beaten down. Fight up here in the top lane. Nar chasing down the Orn. Orn's going to be forced to flash. While the Nar is going to go into Mega Nar form and clear that minion wave. Oh, but a four-man or a three-man roam onto the bot lane. Chicago's bot lane is pretty unsuspecting right now. They see the Talia. They know something is up. And it looks like they're going to continue to pressure this tower. Something could potentially happen, especially because both junglers are the... Are the Trundle is fighting the Oriana in the mid lane. Oh, she barely makes it over that Weaver's Wall. If she caught, got caught out right there, that could have been the tower that the, the entire fight could have been uh, changed at a moment's notice right there. But speaking of which, fresh the land Trundle, has, the come Trundle has come down. The Sen nice. goes on to the Brahma. It looks like I'm a little bit behind on the fight, but um, I think it's all right. I'm not really sure how our time's desynced. We already resynced it, but it's all good. The Riot Spaghetti Code always, is, always giving us new surprises, but... Oh, this Orn is actually going to go down for a third time up in the top lane. The Skarner's all over the solo lanes. Um, Wait, is Orn gonna actually going to go down? Wait, is he going the to didn't go down. I spoke oh, too soon. Oh, he's out of there. Great job, Orn. Good job. Yeah, spoke too soon, but also back in the ball lane. More fighting. Glacial Fissure goes it down onto Lucian. It looks like they're going to disengage, but Zaya's laying down a lot of damage. Could potentially get caught out right here by a pillar. The calling going down, but the shield is blocking everything. Death sentence misses. Oh, Thresh really flashes oh. right out. But oh my god, oh, there's so much fighting happening everywhere. Flash, flash, auto attack goes out of Trundle, and nothing's gonna happen because Lucian perfectly uses his heal right in time. Uh, I'm not really sure what's happening top lane right, right there. But... I'll, I'll take down. The, uh, let me go real quick in the top yeah, lane. Break this down. Break this that down. was crazy. <laughs> Orin literally had like five health left as as he was about to die to the Skarner. But then the Talia flashed, healed him, and then he got a shield from his fire breath that gave him enough health to then just execute the Skarner and keep him away and keep himself alive. He did sadly lose the top lane, but left with his life and an extra kill under his belt. I just was immensely impressed by this Orin in the top lane. He is so good at just staying alive. It's it was crazy. <laughs> I guess that's what's going to happen when you play Orn, man. Yeah, man. And it seems like, sadly, though, OSU is going to be... It's actually the first time in this series are going to be losing the first two towers to their base. They're going to be losing both the top and bot lane before OSU even gets one. But OSU doesn't even know that they're in the bush right now. Lucian! Oh my god, this could be a very sneaky happen. play there. Completely Oh, behind. they're waiting for the Skarner right now. They're going. They're going to collapse now. The collapse. The lantern is going to lay, lead them right into the hands of this Brom stun going down onto the Thresh. It looks like the Thresh might go down, but they're they're not. They're target swapping like crazy right now. Lucian doesn't know if he's being focused or not, so he's just gonna go back in and try and target the rest of them. Oh my God! Guardian popping, saving size life with the Weaver's Wall, cutting off their escape, and the call of the Forge God. Oh, knocking up so many people and potentially taking down. No, he's not gonna be able to take down the Brom, but he almost took down that Zaya with that ultimate. Yeah, Orion is gonna have to use that heal to get away with that speed boost. That's gonna be a difficult one. Uh, and good capitalization by OSU, uh, recognizing that they didn't really have the resources to defend that tower. Yeah, um, I think the problem Chicago ran in there was they just should have, pri pri again, they keep prioritizing that Thresh for some reason, when they should be just prioritizing that uh, Lucian. Sadly though, Nar is gonna just drop from trying to do something there. But I wasn't ready for the Trundle and Talia, and I think they're gonna, they might be losing this mid lane now. Mm. Yeah, it looks like I he's just gonna tank. tank. Yeah, he's just gonna tank it all the way. Well, wait. Oh. Okay, he's good. He's good. He's clear. Oh, yeah, he's clear. He's good. Oh, he's not gonna die. Not today. Tower doesn't get the flash their mastery just yet. We're gonna keep going on. Um, Lucian's gonna go top lane to clear this 
this wave. But I think for uh, Chicago, their problem is they keep targeting the tank, especially Thresh, when he does literally nothing. And this Lucian yeah. just notices this and turns around and completely starts hamming on them. So they so, just need to start uh, far focusing better. So I think this uh, this next fight, this next big team fight, might revolve around this dragon or around this fight between Orianna and Orn. Yeah, Orn's definitely going to want to try and just get out of there. Um, Wait until Talia comes. Yeah, definitely. But meanwhile, the bot lane, while Steel lane is pressuring the top lane, yep, ping's going down, but the entirety of Chicago's, uh, of Chicago's team is trying to back it up. Will they be there though? OSU's entire team is collapsing on this one Nar, this poor Nar. Yeah, forced to flash uh, over that that knockback. Um, yeah, the seismic shove not going to be able to connect right there. But here comes Chicago's team. I think this might be the focus of a big team fight for the first time. We'll see a like a cl very clear five on five. Chundle getting the pillar, but a command shockwave landing on all three members of the team in that jungle. OSU is going to lose their Talia. And, oh, the Lantern is barely gonna save the Orn. Wait, but Killing Smite going down onto Skarner, denying him that movement speed that he needed to catch up to that Trundle and the Lucian, but Braum is still on the hunt. Chicago is able to get away 1-0. Good job, Chicago, grabbing those kills. Lucian's gonna be calling. I don't know why he called it from the mid lane, but... Yeah, I think um they're probably gonna try and take that take that one kill and uh the, the pressure that they have around the map and ward up dragon and try and capitalize on this objective yes i would definitely say push the dragon now while the enemy's low but they're gonna but get the death sentence press. right onto brom but brom has his really large shield up and not gonna take that much damage all that damage getting forced on to brom and meanwhile this nar is beating away at this orange trying to build up the nar bar they may go for the dive right here yeah a lot of damage going down and i think they might just try and focus down this tower Members of OSU are pretty low right here. And... Yeah, they're pressing the attack and Command Shockwave into the Gnar! Eight straight into the wall, a two-man Wombo combo, but not enough going down because it's an, it was an Orn who was hit, and I don't think uh, Orianna just has the eno enough AP to do that much damage. And uh, they're coming down at the bottom of this fight. That's actually really surprising. Thresh, be able to pick, Thresh is now able to pick up his second kill of the game up there, taking the Nara's life, as well as allowing them to go 1-0. And now they're going to do Dragon. They're going to be able to get this extra out of combat, and in combat, I think now movement speed up. When Drake now gives, it, uh, yes, it does give you a little bit overall movement speed. Yeah, this is definitely going to be one of those more intense games. Look how close the, the gold is between both teams. Just one tower from Chicago. Uh, just getting that mid lane tower could even up the gold very easily. Both teams have one dragon, but I think that this next objective uh, that's going to be highly contested is this Baron. That is for sure. I think Brom's going down to go ward up that, as well as clear any wards that could be around that area. Um, vision wise, it's that OSU is keeping a lot of vision towards around the um, dragon down the bot lane while the enemy team of Chicago are putting a lot of um, wards over by the Baron. Yeah, Warrior, uh, I think she's desperately trying to build up this damage. Um, if we look at the gold, actually, between uh, Talia and Oriana, it's dead even, actually. But wait! Oh, she was starting up this Baron. Does Chicago have any idea they're doing this? Yes, okay, yes. Garner is coming down. That sentence going to miss. Baron is actually going to reduce the magic resist of all of the team. But Command Shockwave only going on to the Lucian. Both of Lucian and Thresh. The bot laners are so low. Call of the Forge God going to completely whiff and hit no one. They can they they uh, stop the Baron and Skarner's still going hard here. I think he wants that. Yeah, he wants that control ward. He's greeting for that. But oh, Featherstorm barely missing and a death sentence barely missing onto this eye. But Nars going in and killing that Lucian. So much action is happening right now, and the side ends up taking down the Thresh and the Skarner is trying to zone out. Both the mid laner and the jungler, but Zai is actually going to go down to the top laner. Orn. Oh my god, Weaver's Wall is back up and he's gonna cut off Oriana. Yeah, Oriana's gonna get, uh, be forced to flash right there and Scar's gonna try and greedily take out this control ward on the Baron. They really don't want them doing this Baron because that could just completely swing the pace of this game. But speaking of that, oh my god, Oriana barely survives using Saras Embrace. Orn is copy kind of between a rock and a hard place right now. Getting focused down, the Ignite goes down onto him and they just don't have quite enough damage to take him out. I think Oriana is just not 
somehow not doing that much damage. I I'm not really sure what's happening. Um, I think mostly it's due to the fact that um, she's just having to hit some of these really tanky guys like how um, Warren especially has an adaptive helm trying to stop some of that um, multiple damage in a row and the Thresh is already building in, in ages as well as he's building more just magic resistance so she's really just running into the problems where people are just having a lot of magic resistance against her attacks. Yeah, and from that fight, OSU is going to come out on top, but with a minuscule gold lead of 1.5 thousand, but the flay going down into this fight, Call of the Fortune are going to go down, hitting three members of Chicago. It looks like Nar, yeah, Nar and Skarner were completely out of position. A death sense, oh, barely missing the Braum. That could have been another kill for them, but it still could be potentially. Oriana Braum are running for their lives. The shield is still up, but Concussive Blows going to stop. Uh, Trundle in his tracks and gonna take down Trundle. Everyone is actually so low. This is a really intense fight in the middle of the jungle. Will they go for anything here? They might push towards a Baron. I don't. Think Sadly, they're... though, their jungle did drop, but both jungles dropped. I don't think they're gonna do Baron. That's not safe to do at yeah. all. Yeah. This probably their only damage source is Talia anyway. Yeah, they're probably just gonna push down this mid lane now and keep the pressure going. Every oh, Thresh has now completed his support item. Oh my god, god. wait, I just completely shredded that Thresh's health bar apart, what the heck? He was trying to, he was trying to, um, hook somebody, but in the end, he was able to, he completely missed and was punished dearly for it. We're gonna be having everybody now, going to go back to farming, you know, the good old... Yeah, just just really quickly, let's uh, let's take a gaze, a little gander at um at the, at the gold differences between each player. So the top lane, uh, Nar is actually leading. Uh, Orn is actually leading by uh, by about 300 gold over the Nar. Um, so not too much of a difference. But Trundle is uh, has a significant lead of 1.4 thousand gold over the Skarner. Uh, his items are definitely uh, he has two items complete. Well. Uh, Skarner only has two health items complete, actually, and uh, Trundle's almost working towards his final item, but gonna have to stop that thought as Call of the Forge God goes straight down onto this Nar. Their front line is going down extremely fast, so I can't seem to do that much damage because the front line is just not there, and Orion is, isn't there on the fight either. OSU is gonna be able to take down Nar's health bar, but Nar has teleport and could potentially come back for this Baron fight because OSU is this Baron right now. I think they're faking it. No, they're not actually doing the Baron, but Chicago doesn't have that many wards down. The vision is just not there, but OC is actually going to pull off of the Baron right there. Pretty smart play considering they knew, I think they knew Nar was going to teleport back in. Oh. Seems like he's going to be missing a little bit there on that, that death, death. Oh, what's it called again? Death sentence. Sentence. I apologize. Death sentence. Death sentence. Hey, you look see you're dead. Yep, that's basically what it is, but he can't kill anybody if he can't hook anybody. He's missing those hooks. They seem like they're actually going to maybe setting up for a ban right now. Trundle's going to drop his pillar, try to get a little bit of damage off onto that Skarner invertly. Yeah, it looks like um the the Thresh uh, Comus is uh, not really showing up as he was in the in the previous matches. The previous three matches, he was playing really aggressive and landing a lot of uh, skill shot abilities and just pressuring everyone on the team. It was like there was another, it's basically like there was another damage dealer except just complete pure utility. And Thresh has a lot of the utility except Thomas is hooking minions and whiffing hooks like a, like, like a madman. It's, it's uh, kind of a lackluster performance right now. But speaking of which, his first hook that has landed in a while is goes straight down onto the Gnar and all the attention is going to go straight onto him. And Thresh is going to be under the, threat of going down. Meanwhile, Skarner goes down and the Ignite goes onto the Orn, but disengage off of this fight. Command Shockwave is still available for this Orianna. Nar is desperately running for his life. Tri triple stun. Oh my god, Command Shockwave onto three of the members of uh, OSU's team. Holy crap, I can't gather my thoughts. There's so much fighting happening and a beautiful turnaround from Chicago in the end. I think what happened was Chicago noticed that the entire team of OSU was going to go try to beat this Nara, but they forgot that Nara still has CC in his kit, and they decided to follow up, especially since Oriana had yet to ult, and it was perfect to just completely catch them, like, with, like, out of, um, out of notice, and just get a perfect command shockwave to kill, um, both the Talia and be able to help finish off the 
Trundle. And once again, in this game, it is dead even. Uh, Chicago only leading by about 600 gold uh, overall, and kills are 21 to 21. This is actually a pretty intense match, considering the last, considering the uh, the previous three matches. The first two were kind of stomps. The the third one was kind of a troll by OSU, and they might be regretting that now because I believe Chicago is taking this momentum and rolling with it as they are keeping up in this game and actually capitalizing uh, pretty well and, uh, and and seem to be communicating pretty well with each other, uh, except for right now where I think Skarna might have been seen by a ward because I think OSU is going to try and start up this Baron right now. Five people on the Baron. No one is nearby. Skarna is desperately running towards it. They know, but OSU is shredding this Baron. They are... They, they, it is down to 5,000 health, but Skarna knows... He doesn't, he doesn't actually have a ward on it. He's not going to be able to go for a steal or anything. He has no vision on the on the Baron, and it's going to go to OSU. Lucian. Sadly, the um, Trundle was not able to flash correctly, but the Lucian's able to pick it up instead, and maybe they're even going to get a Skarner in the process. I think they're feeling a little oh, bit of man, a little bit for dinner tonight. <laughs> Picking up the Skarner. For Scorpion for dinner. Wait, we might be seeing a base race in action right now. Baron and five members mm, pushing down the bottom uh, the top side. This. Yeah, the top yeah, side of uh, OCU has all five members. Yeah, everyone's recalling from the side of Chicago. I think that was a bad call. They're going to lose an inhibitor for this. Now. Oh this my god, a hook onto Oriana. Glacial Fisher oh. goes on to all five members. Don't commit shock wave on three members of the team. This fight is going crazy, but the Feather Storm is going to hit everyone and root. Everyone is dealing out so much damage. Zaya is shredding apart the front line as well as the as well as the support. Tunnel goes down. Oh my god. Zaya! Oh Talia is going to go down with a red buff and a quadra kill for Zaya! Baron is gone! Baron is absolutely wiped from the field and they didn't even lose the inhibitor. Holy 40 crap. seconds on the death timers, 25 for Thresh. I think they could get an inhibitor of their own down mid lane and maybe secure this wind dragon. That's why you are the man that screams about games, because I could not follow that. Holy schnitzel, guys, that was crazy. That Zaya is putting out so much damage, and it's rightfully so. It's because she's just the person in the back lane that just keeps nailing people over after over, and they just did not focus her at all. They instead focused like the they instead focused people like the Oriana and stuff, where they need to get that Zaya. I think the priority for their team is kill the Zaya first, or it's just not going to be a fun match afterwards. Yeah, it was actually engaged with a beautiful death sentence onto the Oriana but they were unable to do anything because Brom's shield was in their faces and they couldn't do any damage. Perfect, uh, Brom perfectly tanking up all that damage in that fight. Oriana was able to then land a beautiful command shockwave with the help of the, the Narbar Gnarled, uh, as well as um, a beautiful uh, Feather Storm as well. But a Death Sense, wait, straight on to Zaya. They, they got completely caught out, maybe a little bit greedy for this dragon and this Braum is waiting for Nar to get, try and get out of there with the Blast Cone, but Glacial Fisher beautifully stopping three members of OSU in their tracks. Yeah, all uh, right, there's a there's an ult from Oriana being able to get a little bit of damage, keeping them back away from the enemy base. And they're going to now be, the team of OSU is going to be backing now. And I think Chicago will be trying to push, oh, wrong. Sorry, reverse my teams. Chicago will be backing now, and OSU is going to be now pushing down this mid lane, while Oriana will be trying to be the, la the line of defense, stopping them yeah. from taking this turret. Oriana's wave clear is pretty good, but she's trying to buy time. 15 seconds on her roll and 20 seconds on flash. This could be a crucial timing for this fight, but Orn teleports in and says, no, we are fighting right now. Call of the Forge God, landing onto Oriana and a death sense onto her too. Oh my God, OSU is barreling down this mid lane and a, and a seismic oh, yeah. shove. Bringing back Skarner into the into the pit of the fight, nearly going down as well. They gotta respect that Zaya, especially since she is the bulk of the damage. If they can get a kill on the Zaya, I feel like this may spell doom for the enemy team. Yeah, they're desperately trying to wave clear this feather storm going on to Zaya, but she goes down because that was her only escape. Orn might go down to the tower, but oh my God, yeah, Orn's God is going to take this. Orn's the God. I'm just gonna oh, say that. How yeah, is Orn he just made plays? This Trundle's going to be tanking up. Orn's going to go over and finish off the other inhibitor. I think this might be game. This might be the game, but Oriana has 10 seconds left on her timer. Can they actually finish off the game in time? Look, they're trying to buy time for the minions to hit the towers. Oriana's up in two seconds. The next person up, though, is 15 seconds, which is Skarner. Can Oriana do anything right here? This is kind of going to be a difficult battle, but she near oh my god she got the command shockwave off right there i believe she could have killed orn and talia and completely changed the face of that fight my my friends my friends 
I believe. Though they did a troll game in that third match and did sadly lose, OSU is going to be coming in to claim their third victory over Chicago, making this a 3-1 victory for OSU.